Good morning. At work, nice and early. Um, first of December. I think it's the first of December. Um, yeah, first of December. And it's hot, so it's getting hotter. I was um, had to go and collect a parcel this morning from Ospos, which is literally just down the road. And that was sort of, gosh, 5.45 in the morning. And just going outside, it was, it was hot, boiling hot. So um, I think the predictions of a, a very, very warm summer in Australia probably going to come true. Now, I like that in many respects because I do like the heat. Um, it is a dry heat, so it's not, um, there's not the humidity you would get back in the UK or, or anywhere else. So you don't tend to sweat as much, and I certainly don't feel it. You do have to take precautions, obviously, because of um, the weather. Uh, there are a lot of um, bushfires, especially in the hills around where we live. So we sort of, I guess, I suppose, Midland is in a, a valley and you're surrounded by hills. And um, so you've got places like Mundaring, um, Northern, uh, all round. And they are subject or they, sorry, they're susceptible to bushfires. And I've got the bushfire app on my phone now, um, just to alert me if there are any issues. Now, we, we kind of live in the suburbs or urban area, so it's really probably not going to be a problem for us. If anything, we we'll probably get the the smoke um, and the you know the lack of visibility that comes down to where we are. Fires shouldn't really happen. Um, down this far, although, you know, it is, it has happened in the past, so we just don't know. And we just have to take those precautions. So, you know, you have to have, as a household, there was a leaflet actually the other day, you have to be prepared for um, any eventuality, you have to have a plan in place. I suppose in many respects, it's a bit like being at work and having um, a risk assessment or you know, you know anything that could happen any eventuality that could happen you have to um take account of so yeah it's it is what it is it's australia and i know a lot of the people in the hills especially i mean i was talking to you know joe who we got the uh, uh kitten uh kira from and she was saying you know they worry all the time and you know i've got members of staff here that also experience um bushfires to one extent or another now that they, they might not directly experience it but they certainly know someone who's been affected or you know you, you can see it i mean a lot of people who live and work in midland are from the hills anyway so we're kind of like the the last suburb in Perth before the hills. So, you know, we've, we've got a lot of people that come in to do shopping, um, et cetera, et cetera. So just gotta be really careful. Kira's doing well. He's a horror. Uh, so he's, he kind of sleeping with me quite a lot at night. He's so tiny though. He's he literally can fit in the ball of your hand. So I worry to death that I'm gonna squash him, but he seems to, he seems to be fine. He's sort of sleeping at the side of the bed rather than on the bed. But then it is a little bit warm at night, so I guess he feels more um, cooler down there. Which is fine. Uh, climbs, loves to climb. So you often find him climbing on the headboard and sat above your head when you wake up. Um, but he is adorable, lovely and um, complete contrast to Pippa, although I love her to bits. So she's finding his presence a little bit difficult. 
she'll get over it. She actually, she's getting better. We, we did have, um, fell away. Um, we had that plugged in, but the other half has taken it out. He said it was causing issues. And actually, you might be right, because since that's been taken away, he seems to be fine. And she seems to be fine. And they seem to be getting on a lot better. So, fell away. Mm. It cost a lot of money. It was about $120 for that course, which would only last in a month. And it doesn't seem to have worked. And actually, they seem to be doing better without it. So that's just a good thing. Uh, Christmas, um, yeah, I'm still looking forward to Christmas. You know me, I'm a big kid. I love Christmas. Flashing lights, etc., etc. Difficult with Akira because he likes to climb. And I got up the other morning and he was sat in the middle of the Christmas tree. Now, that's all well and good. Uh, I don't mind him climbing. I've removed anything breakable off the tree, but I have read some horror stories about um, kittens being strangled by Christmas lights, etc., etc. So I'm trying to devise a way of preventing that from happening. I'm not saying it would, but you know, kittens are silly, stupid, and you know, they, they certainly are not worldly wise. And he's so tiny, um, very fragile. So um, I've got like, well, I, I did a search actually online and silver foil. So I put silver foil on the tree trunk and that's supposed to repel cats and kittens because they can't stand the feel of silver foil. The usual citrus sprays, etc., which I will get this weekend. Um, and also, a tree skirt, so you're trying to prevent the kitten or get the Kira from climbing up the tree. So if I put him on a bed skirt, he's just that's he can't really hoist himself up. Also, um, a what do you call it? Like a fence that you put around the tree. <laughs> so it looks like it looks like the tree is in jail, but they do have those in Kmart. Now, it is difficult here because animals, um, cats, they don't like cats outside full stop because of the wildlife and cats, kittens do tend to kill the wildlife. So for all intents and purposes, the majority of cats and kittens are indoors. So you really have to sort of make your house cat kitten friendly. Now we've got a cat tree, we're going to probably get another cat tree and we're going to try and make it as cat friendly as possible. We love cats, we're not going to give up cats. And I'm also quite house proud as well, so that sort of gives me a little bit of anxiety about cats jumping on top of furniture and, you know, breaking things. But we're going to try and uh, teach her, or, or sorry, him, how to um, be respectful. <laughs> for a cat, that um, could be an impossible task. Pippa's great. She she doesn't um, she doesn't destroy anything. She she's 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 Pippa. She she's uh, moody, um, sour. Uh, she doesn't lie to people, but she certainly doesn't destroy anything or will jump anywhere. So there's going to be a difference with him. He's he is going to be um, a little swine, I'm sure. So. Also today, I got this inkling to book a holiday. I'm thinking about, um, we were gonna to go to Japan, as I said, and I'm not sure if that's gonna be viable because it's, that's gonna be a big trip. So I'm thinking maybe possibly Vietnam in the new year. Um, there's some great deals at the moment about, and I fancy going back to Vietnam and exploring that a bit further, maybe 10 days there. Um, go to Ho Chi Minh City and um, yeah, visit, revisit a few places that I loved as well. Hallam Bay, which I didn't get to see, which I'd love to see this time. So, holidays, Christmas, kittens. I believe it's snowing in the UK. Enjoy the snow. I'm very jealous because I do love the snow. Um, 
and I sort of following Britain closely on the news. I'm not even going to talk about the news because Britain's politics and news just gives me anxiety and stress. So I, I just don't even talk about it. Happy to be in Australia. Have a good day. Ciao.